Greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore once again. Today we're going to look at equal loudness contours. Now if you haven't watched the video on loudness, I strongly suggest you watch that one, digest it before watching this video. That video introduces the whole concept of loudness and its relation with sound pressure level. Two different things. Always remember, loudness is the human perception of sound pressure level. They are not the same thing. In front of us, we have the ISO standard equal loudness contours. And just to give you a sort of quick overview, I had sketched these in the preceding video, but these are nice and accurate, unlike my quick sketches. So along the horizontal here, we have frequency. We're going down here at 16 hertz at the base end and 16 kilohertz at the extreme treble end. Notice that this is a logarithmic frequency axis. So it's ratios that are constant. Notice, right, here we are at, uh, you know, a kilohertz. And there's 2 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, working backwards, 500, 250. See, we're doubling, we're halving, and it's the same distance. Right, as we go between these, there's basically three squares, if you will, between each of these doublings. All right? Because let's face it, down here in the base, a couple of hertz difference, you know, if you're listening to a 40 hertz sine wave versus a 42 hertz sine wave, it's plainly obvious. On the other hand, if you're way up here, you know, 10 kilohertz, well, the difference between 10 kilohertz and 10,002, really can't hear that. So we use this logarithmic axis. Now on the vertical we have the sound pressure level, dBSPL. So we're starting at zero, which is taken as the threshold of hearing. And then we work our way up to an excruciatingly loud 130 dBSPL. So each one of these lines, these solid lines, represent an equal loudness contour. In other words, no matter uh, what the frequency is, this will represent sounds sine waves that are perceived by you know a statistical average of the population to be equal in intensity equal loudness and those units are in fonds so anywhere for example here's the 20 anywhere along this curve would represent sounds pitches sine waves that are of equal loudness so you know we could get a pair of headphones for example and listen to two tones, a reference tone, which would normally be one kilohertz, and then the, the tone under question, the test tone, you could flip back and forth between these two tones. As long as it's following this curve, we would say these two tones sound equally loud. But we can see that these are not flat, right? If the human hearing response was equal across the frequency range, we would have straight lines right across, but that's not what we see at all. Okay. The dotted line at the bottom is the hearing threshold. This is the threshold of hearing. And remember that we take our reference at one kilohertz. So ideally zero dB SPL, uh, which we define as uh, a pressure of uh, 20 micropascals. We take that as the threshold of hearing. There are some frequencies up here in this sort of two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 kilohertz um, range, right? 2,000 hertz, two kilohertz. Uh, 4,000 hertz, 4 kilohertz. This range up here, uh, actually your ear is a little bit extra sensitive. You can actually hear some things um, at that sound pressure level, maybe five or so dB below that, that uh, you know, you can hear at the, at the reference tone of one kilohertz. All right, so let's look at some examples of how we would use these curves. So to start off with, I would like to find the loudness so when you hear that, find the loudness, you're thinking in terms of an answer in fonds, not an answer in dBSPL, right? That's a sound pressure level. Loudness is measured in fonds. So I want to find the loudness of a 125 hertz tone, in other words, 125 hertz sine wave, that's at 60 dBSPL. So what I do is I find those two things, 125 hertz is down here, and uh, 60 dBSPL is over here. And where they intersect is my point of interest. So I'm going to just draw a couple lines 
So here's 125 hertz, right? That's what I said, 125 hertz. So I'm going to bring this up until I get right before my 60. Then I'm going to go from 60. I'm going to bring that across. Now where these two actually intersect, which is the point right there where I have the cursor, okay, that represents the, let's call it the point of interest, all right? And what I need to do is find the curve that's right on top of that. What is that curve? Well, we have one that's excruciatingly close, right? We've got this uh, 40 Fon curve right here. It's just above that intersection point, right? The 125 hertz and the 60 dB SPL, just above. You know, maybe you would just call it 40. Maybe you want to call it 39. OK, um, but that's approximately what the loudness is going to be, right? So we call that, if you want to be a little snickety about it, we call that 39 fonts. Boom. Done. So you could do that with anything, right? You find some frequency, you have some SPL, you just find where the intersection is, you find the curve that goes near it, you might have to estimate, you know, maybe this, um, you know, might be off a little bit. You know, if, if I was talking about, let's say, instead of, instead of 60 dB SPL, Maybe I'm talking 80 dB SPL. So I'd go over here to the 80 dB SPL. That would come out here. Of course, this line would extend up to that point. There's my intersection. Well, there's my 70 curve right there. Here's my 60 curve. So, you know, it's roughly halfway, right? So we would say, okay, but 80 dB SPL, uh, 125 hertz tone, that's working out, um, you know, to somewhere in the 65 Fon range. Okay, alrighty, now let's do something a little bit different. Sort of the opposite direction. What sort of SPL would I need in order to achieve a certain loudness? So let's say I want a loudness of 70 fonts. So here's my 70 font curve. All right, we were near that recently. All right, there's my 75, 75 font curve. And I'm interested in a frequency of 250 hertz, right? So here's 250 hertz. So what's the SPL that gets me that? So I'm going to take my 250 hertz, and I'm going to go up to that 70 font curve, right there. All right. Now go from this point across and see where we are in terms of the SPL. Bonk, right there okay so that looks like it's maybe a smidge over 75 we might call that 76 right 76 db spl so 70 fonts at 250 hertz would require an spl of six uh, 76 db right so we can see that the fonts and the in the uh, spl are not the same thing they're different sorts of things now what I think might be a little bit more interesting than that is to figure out an equivalence between two frequencies. And this is, this is where it gets kind of eye-opening. So we might ask, what SPL would be required to make a 63 hertz tone, 63 hertz tone, as loud, equivalently loud, as a 4 kilohertz tone at 40 dB SPL? So I'm going to go over here and find my uh, 4,000 hertz, my 4 kilohertz, 40 dB SPL. I have to find out what that loudness is first, right? Because I'm asking, the first part of the question is, what SPL is going to be required to make this thing as loud as this other tone? So I have to know how loud that tone is. So this is like the very first problem. But now we're going to do this at 4 kilohertz and 40 dB SPL. All right, so here's my 40 dB SPL. Here's my four kilohertz. So I'm gonna bring this up. And again, I'm gonna stop this just a little short. And here's my 40 dB SPL. Okay, so where those two points come in, that's the, uh, the loudness level in fonts. Well, that does not hit one of these lines perfectly. We can see it's partway between 
the 40 and the uh, and the 50 fon curve. What do you want to estimate that at? You know, it's not quite halfway. Maybe you might estimate that at 43. So what I want you to do is kind of imagine that there is uh, sort of a line that's sort of hovering above this 40 40 fon curve. Um, you could kind of think, I'll just sort of sketch it in here really quick like. So you can imagine that there's this line that represents the 43 fon curve. All right, which is, you know, my drawing is, is less than perfect. But bear with me. So you just kind of estimate this. Oops, that was a little high, but eh, we'll get rid of it. Do it again. That might be a little better. All right, so I'm just going to estimate, okay, this kind of jaggedy looking line represents my uh, 43 font curve. All righty. So that's the first part of it. We know it's 43 font. So, so the, the second part of it is I'm going to consider a 63 hertz tone and I want to see what the SPL is going to be. So this is like the um, the second the second uh, problem we did. So here's my 63 hertz tone and I'm going to bring this up to that 43 fawn curve. All right. So you know, my, my less than perfect red line there. Now let's take that and we'll bring it across and we'll see what the corresponding SPL is. All right, so that's around there, um, between 70 and 80. So maybe it looks like it's a smidge over halfway. So maybe 76, 75, 76. Oh, I don't know. My drawing over here might be less than ideal. So let's just call it 75. All right. So it's going to take 75 dB SPL uh, to get that same loudness. Now think about that for a sec. It only took... 40 dB SPL to get this loudness at 4 kilohertz. 40 dB SPL to get that same loudness in, down here in the bass at 63 hertz, you know, which is relatively low, it takes around 75. In other words, it takes an extra 35 decibels. 35 decibels. That's what would have to be coming out of uh, you know, like a power amplifier. All right, to make these two sounds equally loud, you need an extra 35 decibels. All right, that's that's a sizable um, power increase. You know, if we were talking about um, you know, like a subwoofer, for example, this is why subwoofer amplifiers have to be so stinking big and powerful. Um, your ear just isn't that sensitive to these extreme low frequencies. All right, so that's the basic idea. You either you either have a known uh, sound pressure level. And of course, a frequency. Use the uh, curves to find a corresponding loudness, or you have a loudness, right? You have a frequency, you have a loudness, and then you just sort of re reverse the process to find the corresponding SPL level. And there you go.